Hello. Uh, thank you so much for, for coming to this presentation. We are very happy to see so many people here. <laughs> okay, so I am Ivan. Uh, he's I'm David Pinilla. We are both from EXO, which is an association related to, to Gifinet. And well, we will give a, like an overview of what Giphy is, its relationship to, to free software. Just an overview. Okay. okay. So, this, is, this presentation is mainly based on this document, which is What is Giphynet? It's an introduction to, to Giphynet, wrote by Roger Puello. You can easily, very easily find it on the, on the main Giphynet page. So, it's <laughs> to be acknowledged for that. Okay, so there are many misunderstandings on what Giphy is, so I will start by telling what Giphynet is not. <laughs> so, uh, Giphynet is not an internet provider, Hmm? It's, not an, it's not an ISP, so, but uh, we ease the access to the internet. It's, uh, we, we can ease the, uh, this, this kind of access. It is not a subscription service, but there are many companies and organizations that provide this service on top of Giphynet. It is not a second class network, some hobbyist network. It is, uh, it is connected to the core infrastructure of the internet. It is not just a Wi-Fi network. Uh, we are using more advanced uh, technologies like optical fiber right now, well, from, and for, for many years we've been done in, doing this. It is not a single, corporation, a single corporation of any kind. It's not a public or, or private uh, corporation. Uh, there are many corporations, many organizations that, that are part of Giphynet or participate in it. It is not something held by a single, single organization as well. Giphynet itself, as a <laughs> network in this, in this aspect, uh, has many, many owners, okay? So, and it is not <laughs> some kind of very radical movement trying to change the world and make it burn, no. Uh, we, have a, we are transformative with, a, let's say, political, may say in the, in the broad sense, uh, political movement, okay? But we are not very <laughs> radical in that sense. Okay. Uh, and we are not a geek only or hobbyist only project. Uh, there are many kinds of roles, everyone can participate, everyone can play their role, okay? We are not some wild west place <laughs> at all. We have very clear rules that we, uh, we will introduce to you later, okay? And it is not actually a new idea. Uh, this is an application of the, of the common pool resource handling to something that is new, like computer networks. This also happens with, with free software. So it's just a new, a new version of something old, very old. <laughs> okay, so. I will explain a little bit of the technological project of Giphynet. <coughs> Uh, before I talk uh, about techy stuff, let's see a little bit of context. Uh, Giffinet started in a little area in the countryside of Spain and Catalonia, named Usona. <coughs> uh, there are almost no broadband internet access, so neighbors uh, started to collaborate and self-provision the, uh, their internet access. Uh, they were not um, geeky, geek people. They are farmers, uh, normal people that wanted to, to access that public uh, resource. <coughs> uh, as Ivan said, uh, it's a common pool resource <coughs> like some other resources like uh, free software and has some fundamental conditions that it's free, so any can <coughs> anyone can do anything, like hosting hp.net web pages. We, you are free to do anything. <laughs> uh, it's open to anyone, and so you can join and study the network, see how it works, and improve it. And it's neutral, so there is no discrimination on the content on or who you are to access the network. 
Uh, it started from using commodity Wi-Fi hardware like the Linksys uh, BWRT. Uh, in 2008, uh, it became an autonomous system and joined the Katnix Internet Exchange in Barcelona, where we <coughs> exchange traffic with other ISPs and connect to some uh, top-level providers. Uh, in 2010, there were more than 10,000 uh, 10, nodes, and we started to deploy optical links. And nowadays, there are more than uh, 33,000 30, <laughs> nodes lot. and <laughs> almost uh, 50,000. project. During the questions we will show you a little video of the growth of the network. <coughs> Here you can see a map, a map of the nodes actu uh, that are actually on the network. <coughs> About the infrastructure that we are on, on, we have a Drupal website where we, uh, anyone can register and post their node configuration. Uh, we use OpenLDAP for uh, authentic authentication both on the website and the network resources like pr uh, internet proxies. Uh, we use some tools like uh, Smoke Ping, Weather Map, or GSTO IP for managing resources re related to the Network Operation Center in the Cadnix. And from for config management of the network protocols, we use Beard, Quagga, and BMEX6, that's it. It's a mesh routing al algorithm. <coughs> and we do both uh, use SNMP as protocol, uh, both by Cacti and, well, some Drupal modules that we have developed to, public, uh, to publish the usage information. Uh, almost all routers on Giphynet run on Genio Linux firmware. Uh, although there are a lot of closed source systems that we are trying to change, but it's <laughs> it's what <laughs> users do, uh, use uh, mainly uh, from Microtic and, and that platforms. <laughs> uh, and we have some supporting uh, services for the users to collaborate, like uh, Simpa for the mailing lists, uh, Rocket Chat that is widely used to communicate among users and Etherpad and MediaDrop for uh, video publication. There are a lot of uh, self-developed and project that started with the needs of Giphynet. As I said before, there are some uh, primordial um, Drupal modules that let users create um, domain names and associate to resources. This um, information is replied that uh, is replied to replicated. Sorry for <coughs> all the DNS servers of the network, so that are uh, geographically distributed among the different geographical areas. Also, there are a uh, package that it's named an SNP service that does all the SNP, SNP uh, collection and service as a red R R D tool images to the web page. Also, we have developed a mesh routing firmware that is used uh, a lot in the network and is, is it started like 2009 and it's actively developed right now and we also have some tools for managing the proxy access that is the principal way of accessing internet in the beginning of the project also, uh, Giphynet has collaborated in, in several European projects 
that involves research, for example, confined project that <coughs> lets uh, developers uh, try application and services, and we bet that our that, that is a um, framework for testing on commodity Wi-Fi hardware. Also, some projects like RP modules and a distro for installing services. Now, Ivan will continue with the social project. Well, <laughs> thanks. Before, well, uh, Adrian al already introduced many of the, <laughs> of the tools and the concepts. Thank you very much. I cannot check where he is now. <laughs> okay. uh, we have a, a big issue with the, with the projects we develop, yeah. and it's the... Uh, the, the, it's dissemination. Many people in the network doesn't even exist. The, that, that, the, don't even know that it exists. That they exist. Uh, and the long-term funding and maintenance. For instance, we we had this this European projects, but now they are done. It's a little bit difficult to to pay someone to actively develop such complex tools. So, any idea or suggestion on this will be very very welcome. So, regarding the the social project. Uh, very similar to what Adrien already already mentioned. Uh, we consider the uh, access to telecommunications and the internet to be a human uh, human right. So we work towards that. Huh? We want to to facilitate access to telecommunications and the internet, an access that is affordable. So it doesn't discriminate on on how rich people or poor people. Huh? It's for everyone. We put special. Uh, importance on the fact that that some people typically left behind can access the internet, like people in the rural areas where it all began. And well, we call Gifinet a community network because we feel a community. We we know each other uh, at least <laughs> locally <laughs> in the different areas. No, uh, and we are a pretty diverse, uh, pretty diverse community. Of course, we would like to be more diverse, but. I think it's okay right now. Uh, we, there are volunteers that participate in its uh, expansion. We have all kinds of associations like EXO that I introduced you before. Giffy Budget. Oh, Giffy yeah, pretty big uh, associations. Uh, we have companies that work on top of GiffyNet and provide their services on their maintenance or installation of, of nodes and infrastructure. We have, of, co of course, the users. We, uh, we consider users to be uh, also part of, of the of the community, and we share their uh, their interests, and uh, and we have the public administrations that that help that the, the help the network deploy by uh, giving us access to some key places, key locations, or is in the the legislation as well. Uh, we have these very clear rules that I mentioned to you before. Uh, we have. This free open uh, neural, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, free open neutral network commons, which should, mm, like like the GPL license of <laughs> of right. GitNet, yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone that participates in the in the network, in the physical network itself, must accept it explicitly by signing it, okay. Uh, and this is the the base for everything else in the network, like some of these governance tools, like a conflict resolution uh, system that we apply when there are uh, not so agreeable <laughs> situations, but there are, and it has proved to, to work pretty well. And uh, there is the foundation. Okay, uh, the foundation is like a legal uh, personality for the network whenever it is needed, but it is not the owner of the of the of GiffyNet. It is not GiffyNet itself. It's a tool for GiffyNet, and someone to guard for the for the network to develop according to the to the rules that I mentioned before, okay? Uh, legally, it's, well, it's a, a private, not-for-profit foundation. Uh, it has many other roles uh, that you can see here. And it is a telecommunications operator in Spain. It is registered, it is registered, uh, registered as so, uh, as such, and uh, it, uh, it can provide access to other ISPs that want to to share this, this connection in the in the CATNICs, in the, the neural exchange point in in Barcelona that, that David mentioned before. Okay, and as a common resource pool, okay, this is a concept that was uh, described by Eleanor Ostrom, it's Nobel Prize uh, winner. Uh, she introduced this this concept, and 
uh, this is this has existed for millennia for for uh, people <laughs> for people running uh, resources that uh, that must be shared between several people like the earth <laughs> like, uh, fields or things like that it's, it's a very very old concept uh, well and when using such a resource concurrently one uh, one must make an economic uh, <laughs> economic administration of it no uh, so, uh, by uh, everyone, by the fact that everyone uses the same the same resource pool and develops it uh, together, we can we can manage to to make a more efficient use of, of it, and to avoid some kind of duplicity that uh, that other ISPs and telcos produce just because well, everyone has to have their line and pay for it and. We think it's very inefficient. No? We do, do not have that. Uh, so, uh, all participants uh, cooperate in the development, and uh, service providers can offer their services at a price, or there are services that offer them as for members. That many, many kinds of, of models running on top of it. Uh, well, these are some of the of the professional services or, uh, offered in the in the network. You will see. Internet access in the bottom because GIFINET is a, it's like a big local local network, but it is not uh, it that does not provide access to the internet by default. So one of the ways, of the many ways to, to access the internet besides uh, web proxies and things like that, are these are these ISPs that operate on top of of GIFINET, which are pretty competitive and much cheaper than than other and than other ISPs in Spain. By by grace of <laughs> of using this share share common pool resource. Okay, so to avoid a, a another topic in the in the or to handle another topic in in common pool resource handling, which is the tragedy of the commons, that is that someone uses the resource but doesn't provide any anything to to make it grow. We have this compensation system that applies to the let's say big players. In the in the network, like big ISPs, big associations, volunteers that put a lot of, a lot of effort. So we run this this system that uh, where you can compensate collectively the the, uh, the resources that you put and the the benefit that you get from the from the network. Okay. So uh, to summarize, uh, we uh, we have proof in these years that this kind of model can work. Uh, we have this sophisticated compensation system that has been awarded by, by the European Union and in 2015, I think. Uh, so... Or 16, I can remember. Uh, 16, there was another network, a Scottish network, I think, which was a uh, community network that also, also got, got a similar prize. So, yeah, it's, we, we have the, the recognition of the European Union. It's, uh, I think we, we can... It has proved sufficiently that this can be a model for future, uh, for future access to the, uh, for providing access to the uh, to the internet to everyone in an affordable and more efficient uh, on the resources. Yeah, in an efficient, an efficient and socially good way. So thank you very much for for listening. If I have any questions. <laughs> I will play this this video in the background while you while you, uh, ask, you questions. ask questions. Yeah. If you have any question, six minutes per question. Don't forget to repeat the question. Okay. Let's put it okay. by by first times <laughs> faster. It usually it's by. So the, the first question is, uh, how do we provide uh, internet access with tunnels or whatever? Um, for example, I can explain the EXO use case. They, we use IPIP tunnels, but uh, there are some there are ISPs that use uh, IPv6 mainly and do uh, um, NAT operator for the IPv4. For example, there are many techniques use it. It, it depends on the on the operator itself. Can you repeat? Yeah. Can you repeat? So like the system, how do you handle the routing? Do 
Ah, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. It, uh, you ask about the routing and yeah, yeah. You are you are asking that uh, how we manage the routing in all the network. Well, uh, we use mainly BGP and uh, uh, so OSPF, OSPF. Yeah. and well, uh, there are some partitions on the network. They start as uh, islands and. Uh, the users decide which protocol use, and then when they join the the network, there are some problems that we must uh, solve using filters or any technique. Yeah. Uh, how did the political situation in uh, Barcelona and Catalonia in general uh, influence the development of Bitnet in the last uh, couple of years? So the question is how did the, the political situation in Barcelona or Catalonia influence the... How it influenced the, the growth of Ethernet? We changed something, huh? okay. So I wouldn't be sure to say, but uh, this QMP project was, was born in some way to support the very quick deployment of a mesh network. It's QMP, it's, it's quick, quick mesh project. So... I don't know if you can consider this to be supporting uh, some kind of political movement. Uh, the city of Barcelona uh, became kind of the turf of the social movements. So maybe you have more support now from uh, the city than you had before. You had, did it change anything? Okay. So regarding what he said about the, uh, the political movement in Barcelona, that changed. So. Uh, with very alive uh, in the last years, we got support from them, but don't know. It's uh, we are very informal ways of of getting support. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't be able to to answer. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know. It seems that it, there is some interest, as we can see in the social meetings that the. Major uh, is interested. Well, the ma uh, gentleman. Yeah, the mayor house. The mayor house is interested, and mm, yeah, we got it, support. It seems that interest has grown. The code of conduct for end users. How do you make them sign them? Is it only for the endpoint users or for end devices users? Like the family of free, everyone has to sign it. So regarding how does people sign this agreement, the the, the commons. Yeah. And how do we do it? Or how is done? They have to register on the website so they can place the node of the network and configure it. And for registering, you have to accept the contract. So, <laughs> eh? It's one per node, one per register. One per user, and with user or with a user, you have to. You need a user to create a node. So, well, we assume that they read it and use it. <laughs> As all, we, uh, as all the services do. <laughs> but uh, when introducing uh, the concept of or the network, we told by um, saying it also. I understand Exo is an ISP, but works over the Wiki network. Yeah. Uh, uh. If you want to connect to the internet, you as a node on Wiki need to go through all the other nodes before you get to the cache. So the question is if EXO is an ISP and how do we get... Yeah, that's the first part of the question. And can you connect directly to EXO on the catnix or do you have to go through the other nodes? And if we uh, need to connect directly to, to the EXO in the catnix or we must go over other nodes? Uh, the infrastructure of Giffinet is, is the, the free part and, uh, and, and EXO is available through Giffinet. No? So, we, in particular, we have a, a machine at the, at the Catnix hosted with other machines of Giffinet of the foundation. And through Giffinet, we reach these servers and then we establish tunnels. Uh, not the exact technology, but yeah. it's done like this. And I, I think it's done like this for other ISPs. You reach yeah. their servers and. Um, Directly, uh, there is there are some optical fiber links from the Cadnix, and there are some equipment connected directly 
by these optical fiber links. And uh, directly, I'm an example. Uh, yeah. He's asking that uh, if you can connect directly to the Cadnix, uh, yes, you can. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> time's up. But he's a fortunate. He's one fortunate owner of an node that connects directly to, to the Teldon building where I, where <laughs> I, I can explain it later. If you want. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.